Hey everyone, so I'm very glad you all liked the last video. It was very fun for me to make and seeing all the positive comments about how you guys thought it was a really cool idea, it just warmed my heart and you know, all that mushy gushy stuff. And before I continue, if you haven't seen it, you probably should, it offers a lot of context for this one. But for real though, thank you. And I do look forward to doing more data related projects as well as I guess UFC stuff. I also wanna incorporate Formula One and basketball and other projects. So if you guys would be interested, definitely let me know. So on the last video, not only was there overwhelmingly positive responses, but there was also a lot of interesting suggestions regarding the project and ways to improve it. And hey, that means this video might actually be original because I don't think V did a follow-up. I don't really know anyone else who has an ELO engine for sports, so yay me. I think the first thing to address is yes, I mentioned this at the end of the video, but the code and my scrape data is all below in the description. I will also put the Git and Kaggle in this description too, so definitely if you want to go see where your favorite fighters are at, want to see the data set itself, definitely go check it out. Anyways, there was one big suggestion which I personally do agree with, that is being peak ELO and how it could be a more definitive GOAT list. What I showed on the last video is every fighter's current ELO, as in it takes every win and loss a fighter has. If we look at the peak ELO, pretty much it will look at what was the highest ELO the fighter achieved in their career, and then we could have an all-time GOAT list focused on more on the prime of fighters. For example, as we looked at the last video, Anderson Silva does not have a very high current ELO. I mean, to have him low on a current ELO thing makes sense. He ended up losing a lot after a GOAT-worthy run. But he still had a run that was GOAT-worthy though, right? To give me a new list, it wasn't all that complicated. If you care about the coding, I just had to create a new Python dictionary and add if the fighter's new ELO is their highest and add it to the dictionary. And if not, move on to their next fight and see if the ELO got higher or not. Doing that actually creates more interesting results. I'll get right into it without the theatrics. At your number one and two spots is still John Jones and George St. Pierre. Their ELO has not changed in, well, I mean, that's okay. I was kind of expecting that to be honest and they're still really high, so it's all good. However, this is where things start to get a little interesting. At the number three spot, sitting at a nice 1,274.56, taking Islam's spot on the original list, is one of the best welterweights of all time in Kamaru Usman. This does bump Islam down to our number four spot. Kamaru did have an incredible run, beating so many notable opponents across his career. So, I mean, is he worthy for our number three spot? For a fifth spot, I think you guys are going to be happy with this one. Sitting at a peak ELO of 1,260.73 is the spider Anderson Silva. You guys were right. Looking at the peak ELO makes this even more spicy at the top and does justice for people like Silva. Another interesting spot is actually at number seven. Leon is at six, which is fine. Good for him. But sitting at 1,240.13 is everyone's favorite, Tony Ferguson. So, hell yeah, Tony fans. Maybe this can count as a win for him. One more thing to look at on this list that I looked at in the last video is one of everyone's favorite rivalries. And oh boy, things have definitely changed a little bit. As in, they're separated by almost 60 ELO instead of 0.01. I'll just give it to you straight. Israel sits at 1218 and Alex sits at 1160. I like both fighters, but I can't lie. The current ELO results made the rivalry more fun. Anyways though, John Jones, GSP, Usman, Islam, and Silva. Is this a sufficient top five all time? Is there a way to make the GOAT list even more unarguable with more proof who the greats are? Do you guys remember the K value from the last video and how we set it to 40? This is gonna be important for what I'm about to explain. I'd say the next set of popular comments was, what if we give more ELO for finishes? If the fighter gets a submission or knockout, they should get more ELO than a decision, right? And while that is arguable, whether a win is a win or a finish counts more in any MMA debate, I went ahead and did it anyway. Basically, what I went ahead and did was, if a fighter does get a finish, it does not matter the round, the K value gets a 15% booster. So, you know, they get a knockout or submission, they get 15% boosted to their K value. Why 15%? Again, the K value could be anything, and I thought 15% is a fair boost for a finish. When we adjust it so fighters who get a finish gain more, and fighters who lose to a finish lose more, and this is adjusted for the peak ELO, so we're looking at peak ELO still, with the K value adjusted, sitting at 1,339.69 ELO is, once again, John Jones. And sitting at the number two spot, actually breaking the 1,300 threshold finally, is George St. Pierre. So, once again, there are numbers one and two. For our number three spot, we have a bit of a callback to earlier in the video. Separated by only two ELO, Islam slightly edges out Kamaru if we give bonuses for a finish. I guess we have a new rivalry. Come to think of it, if we had a prime Kamaru versus Islam, how do you think that one would shape out? You know, I was going to finish the video there, but there is one more thing we could try.
Yeah, so once again, Kamaru and Islam, fantastic fantasy rivalry. And I think we've learned that sending your K value too high is kind of volatile and could lead to wacky things happening. Oof, I was going to conclude the video there, but someone actually created a visual for the ELO engine, and I think it's really cool and I want to show it off. And it works out because they bumped the K value up to 200 as well. There's no bonus for finishes, however, I still want to show this off because it's really cool. I merged the pull request to the main branch, so definitely check it out for yourself in the Git. All right, so this is their Jupyter notebook. I just pulled it up in Visual Studio Code. So this is so this is their K factor bumped it to 200, uh, just because UFC fights happen not as much as you know matches in chess, so they might offer a better comparison. Here they utilized the Get Fighter info that I had in my original code, but they you know obviously made a lot of changes to it. And then here are the changes here. If you you know for example do Roy Gracie or Royce Gracie, you could see that you know the columns are a bit nicer um, than what I have. And then yeah, they include like a little chart of uh, you know his elo throughout time, which is really really cool. And I'm really glad that you know someone did this. And then of course we have the best elos in history, so we have like their peaks. Um, and if we can see here, even without the K factor bonus, Islam is still number one with Kamara at number two. I guess you know once again the rivalry. John Jones is a little far down. Same with George St Pierre. Yeah, pretty crazy stuff. Um, here we go. Anyways, yeah, this is just what I want to show off real quick. Back to the video. One more thing that I do find really funny before I conclude this video is that through all of these, Islam is higher than Khabib in all of these lists, whether you're looking at the current one, the peak ELO, the K-adjusted one. Do you guys agree that Islam is better than Khabib all time? Comment down below. Once again, I want to thank Mr. V. You guys should totally watch my previous video. All code and data sets I came out with will be in the description, so definitely find your favorite fighters. I know Conor McGregor was a popular one. If you guys want to see every ELO a fighter achieved after a fight, that is also a function I made in my code, so all you have to do is type in a fighter's name, and it will give you an ELO they achieved in the career. So thank you once again. All of you have a very fantastic day, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next data-related upload.